All the chrome's back in there. Bumpers are on. I don't know how much more amazing I can make it look outside the tires. But that's what it looks like. I think it looks a lot better two-toned. Uh, I think the chrome kind of sticks out a little bit better. But at least the bumpers are back on there. Uh, I straightened out the rear bumper as best that I could because when I did it the first time it was a little bit crooked uh, I think it was a little bit higher here and lower there so since I took it off I redid it but it's mounted the same way I already did a video on how to mount it to move it up so it's back in its factory location and then I got the chrome handle for the tailgate it's crooked I don't know why the factory one was that I had was crooked and this is a new one and it's crooked I guess that's what they look like I don't know but for the front bumper uh, I showed how I did the whole mounting system on it uh, with adding the spacers and moving it up uh, on the front of the frame you gotta contour the frame since you're trying to go straight up uh, if you don't grind back the frame then it's going to come up and forward and then you just end up increasing the gap so on mine I ended up having to cut some of the frame so that my gap would be like factory And then for the outside bumper brackets, they keep the outside of the bumper from flopping around. Again, since I wanted it to be back in his factory location, I ended up having to cut the brackets. So, I could get it to actually bolt up on there. I could have made a whole new bracket system for it, but yeah, I wasn't even bothered trying to go that far with it. So I ended up just cutting the factory bracket off. Uh, it's like two inch square tubing and welding that to the square tubing. And I ended up having to weld it to the frame. That was really my only option. This side was the hardest side because I'm trying to get around the gearbox itself so I just said I ground it down so that it would clear the gearbox and then it's just welded on both sides I mean that's really the only thing I could come up with because there's really no room to try and get this to go back into there so that's how I did that then I have the off-road design gearbox brace is in there keep the frame from cracking yeah it's a two-wheel drive c10 gearbox since I'm doing crossover steering on it on the fan shroud it's the suburban fan shroud the 90 suburban fan shroud and then I just ended up taking two one inch square tubings and cut them to fit so that I could get this shroud to work. And then it's just painted them and ran some bolts through there. And then on the bottom half of the shroud, I ended up trimming just a little bit. Uh, I took about a quarter inch off of that lip off of this lip right here just so I'd have a little bit more clearance for the fan I think it's like an inch of clearance between the fan blade itself and the shroud so that's good enough on it on my power steering I have the 90 Suburban power steering or accessory bracket and the power steering pump is from the 90 Suburban I ended up going with just a pressure hose for an 85 Chevy K10 just a regular replacement and that screwed right into the power steering pump itself no issues 
Uh, the return is the same for an 85 Chevy K10. No issues with that. Uh, I have a power steering cooler is mounted on the front of the radiator. It's a little bit higher than the pump itself, but I ran the pump off of a electric drill and I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, the main thing is just bleeding all the air out of the pump before you actually run it on the motor so it then doesn't end up making a bunch of noise for the rest of its life. So filling it up with fluid, uh, turning the gearbox to get all the air out of the whole system and then with it being a little bit higher it might be a little bit overfilled but it works it doesn't pour out of the cap so that's all that matters then for the wires I just did the zip tie wire loom system on it it does have the boot socks just to keep the spark plug wires from getting burned and then I zip tied the top end of it so that mud does doesn't get down in there so that was really the only way I could come up with doing it those are from the Mustang they're they're ten dollars a piece for those heat boots well worth the money uh, it's better than buying new spark plug wires then I made some brake lines well, I've made all the brake lines for it but they're just brake lines from advance uh, if you go to make them yourself these fittings here at the master and at the proportioning valve, you're gonna have to cut and transfer them over to your new lines uh, because the new lines don't come with those fittings. So I had a buddy flare them out for me. And then I transferred the springs over from the old brake lines to these brake lines. And then they're just all held in place. But at least that's all done. At least it runs. <sighs> then I got the door panel test fitted on there. This is the old red door panel that I painted with black interior paint. I think it looks pretty good. I got the switches. I just gotta, gotta get the bottom carpet for it. It's got new motors in there. As they go up and down the holes are there for bolting the motor in so if the motor goes bad I don't have to pull that whole mechanism out and all I got to do is take the door panel off take the bolts out pull it out put a new motor in you're done so that's how I did it I didn't feel like doing it the other way and I also put that door panel on so I can make sure that it fits over how I did my wiring. So that's how I did the power window wiring. It's the same on the driver's side. Uh, it comes out through the small hole in the front and then runs back in. And I'm not running the door lock actuator so I just ran it back and then zip tied it here. But the actual power window motor wire itself goes in the door and then comes follows along the bottom of the door and plugs into the motor then all this is kind of zip tied in place and then zip tied into the hole so that's how I did it the door panel covers it and it doesn't hit the door the door panel so I think it looks pretty good with the black it'll look better once I have the carpet and the trim on it but you know it's almost done it's getting close And then I just got my battery sitting on the tire till uh, I get the inner fenders in, so I can't put it in. But I got the cables are routed like that, and then I just put rubber hose around the cables so that they won't get too hot. And then they come up here. I got these little fancy battery ends from Advance. They just kind of, you can take the battery on and off, and you just pull the lever down. Make some tight. And that's it.